All right, everybody, good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday morning for Normandy Park United Church of Christ on August 1st, 2021. We are so grateful that you all are here and we are grateful this morning to welcome our guest preacher and uh, my really lifelong friend, Catherine Cummings. Uh, she's been with us many times before and so we're honored to have her here this morning uh, in person along with her son, Tyler, who is visiting from New York. So we're grateful for them. As we open our hearts and minds for worship, I invite you to settle into your seats and enjoy this prelude selected from Chopin's second ballad. Good morning. Will you now join me in these words of gathering? I'll read the light print, and if you would join Catherine in the bold. You call your people to prayer and praise in many ways. This day, bring us together just as you called the people of Israel to gather manna in the desert to eat and sustain life. God of unity. Give us this day our daily bread. Offer us the nutrients we need to remain connected to you. As spiritual beings, we desire to receive food that endures, faith, hope, and love. God of grace, give us this day our daily bread. All life is created and nourished by you. May we grow into new circles of understanding and being reflecting the ways in which we have been touched by your holy manna. Holy Spirit, come. Give us this day our daily bread. Our first song is No Matter. 
I invite you to join me in singing. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, accepted, welcome by God's grace. For we are family, meant to be, purposed for eternity, born in love, from above, God's community. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. Unity, harmony for all to see, justice and equity, God's community. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. sing, worship bring, hands and hearts outstretched to all, Jesus praise, hearts ablaze, listen to God's call, no matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. Savior's call, welcome home, welcome in, welcome one and all. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, accept. Good morning. It's so great to be with you here. I have always loved Normandy Park from your support of Spirit of the Sound till today and getting to see you and I, I keep in touch with Kevin. So thank you so much for having me. Let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Loving God, thank you for tenacity to understand how to keep being the body of Christ in COVID. Thank you for technology that we can still be one, although we're in our own homes. Thank you for Kevin's cleverness and Amy's creativity. Thank you, God, for this congregation and how they have stood together and been together during this time of COVID. God, be with us today. Help us to listen to you as we are together in different places. God, help us to tune you in like a radio and listen to your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of reconciliation. 
God, we confess yes. we are often spoon fed ourselves items and ideas that do not, do not provide us the energy, energy we need to do your work. This creates space between you and us, between ourselves and each other as members of Christ's one body. Oftentimes we are willing to risk our sustained health and well being for immediate satisfaction. Am I unmuted? Through Jesus, we have been given an example of one who truly nourished and sustained by God. In Christ, we are forgiven, made whole and restored to one body. Let us outwardly profess our Christian unity by offering each other a sign of peace. In Christ, we're all forgiven. Thanks be to God. The focus of the uh, message today is all about saints. And so two of our songs this morning deliberately focus on that. So as we move into a time of scripture and sermon and, and hearing the word come to life, uh, please join me in singing our next song together, For the Faithful Who Have Answered. You will recognize the tune. For the faithful who have answered when they heard your call to serve, for the many ways you led them, testing will and stretching nerve, for their work and for their witness as they strove against the odds, for their courage and obedience we give thanks and praise, O oh God. Many minds have glimpsed the promise, many hearts have yearned to see. Many souls have heard you calling us to greater liberty. Some have fallen in the struggle, others still are pressing on. Are not ashamed to own us. We give thanks and praise, O oh God. From this cloud of faithful witness, for the common life we share, for the work of peace and justice, for the gospel that we bear, for the vision that our homeland is your love deep, high, and broad. For the different roads we travel, we give thanks and praise, O God. This morning we have two readings of our sacred story from John. The first is John 15, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. 
I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. And our second reading is from John 1, chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. Here ends our readings. Good morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, these are just my words, but may your Holy Spirit use them to speak to each of these, your servants, God, that we can live lives closer to Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So today in the sanctuary, we have my son, who is visiting from New York City, and Kevin, this is such a weird situation, but I'm so glad to get to be with you as always. Saints come to us all the time and in various forms, but we are not always expecting them and we often do not recognize them when we see one. Perhaps this sermon will encourage you to look for various saints around you, often disguised. I would like to introduce to you to a saint in my life whose name is Ginsburg. No, not Ruth Bader Ginsburg, although he is named for her. He lives with us and we are very close. He is our three-year-old poodle named Ginsburg. Because dogs are wise. Dogs have wise hearts and deep souls. They are deeply devoted to us and they become our family. In fact, the best unconditional love many people ever get in life comes from an animal and most often a dog. I want to share a few lessons I have learned from Ginsburg. These are simple. They might be profound, but perhaps they could be helpful. One, be excited to see others. Whether it has been 15 minutes or several days, my dog, Ginsburg, is always super excited to see me. You came home. I can't believe it. I never thought you would have been standing here at the door the whole time, but you're here. You came. Thank you so much. That's a dog. Second, be loyal. People who are tempted, tempted to wander in relationships need to only look to a dog as a profound example. A dog has usually one person or one family that he or she is devoted to. One family, they like other people, but given that chance, they will always want to be with that one person, that family. Completely loyal, without question, amen. Three, love others, warts and all. A dog doesn't notice if you're wearing makeup or if you have your hair combed. Dogs don't care about your morning breath, although they can smell 200 times better than we do. A dog just loves you completely, just as you are, totally and always, warts and all. Four, get enough exercise, preferably outside. If I were as excited about doing my yoga or climbing on my bike as Ginsburg is about chasing his ball, I would be in excellent health. Dogs keep us healthy and going outside. We have to take dogs out frequently, and that's good for everybody, even in the winter when it's cold and rainy. Being outside is life-giving, and we're closer to God. 
experts say that dogs misbehave because they have not gotten enough exercise. A good lesson. Five, drink more water. Dogs are always thirsty, especially when they come in from playing. However, caution, I don't think it's a good idea for you to drink out of the toilet. Six, play your heart out. Our dog would run literally until he passed out. He chases his ball, it's a golf ball because he's that small. He chases his ball everywhere. And if you want to get him to do something, you bring the ball. His favorite place to chase the ball is on the beach. His second favorite is a golf course. Dogs crave exercise. Seven, rest by the fire. I have a dear friend who is a shaman and she says the four most important things we do in life are pray, play, rest, and sleep. Pray, play, rest, and sleep. The one we most often neglect is rest when we're just sitting, looking out the window, and resting. Eight, savor your closest relationships. I'm looking at you, honey. <clears throat> when I come home or just see my dog after I've been away for a while, Ginsburg is ecstatic to see me and lets me know. Um, it reminds me of that song by James Taylor, and it's called Shower the People You Love with Love. I'm going to sing it a little bit. It's not going to be an Obama moment where everyone broke into um, applause. I'm just going to sing it. It goes like this. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are going to be just fine if you only will. That song says to me, enjoy your, the people that are around you. Don't look for the negative qualities in them. Just enjoy them. Relax in the love that they bring. Relax in all the joy that you have had with them. Sit by the fire and just look at each other and enjoy the love and the life and the hard work you've put into being together. So maybe it's not the Marvel comic books that are the heroes in our life. Maybe it is our dog. Eight, I'm sorry, nine. Be a gracious listener. Dogs are gracious listeners. I have practiced many bad sermons in front of Ginsburg, and he always seems very interested. I also have gotten some anger off with someone I'm really upset with and told him just how upset I was. He just listens. He never tries to fix me. He never tries to give me advice. And he stops me from saying some things I really shouldn't say to other people. That's a good thing. Dogs listen keenly. Dogs always recognize their name, even when they're sleeping. And dogs usually come when called. Ginsburg seems upset when there's any, ever any tension between Connie and I. And I read about a man who was a retired psychologist, and he taught his mutt 1,800 words. My good friend Trish says this, God put dogs on the earth to teach us. And either we get it or we don't. So if we're paying attention, we'll look to saints like God, like dog, the interesting that those are the exact same words turned around, like dogs to teach us. And 11, be friendly. If you have a dog, you will make friends, guaranteed. Um, people love dogs. At least Ginsburg loves every dog he meets. One time this summer, he met a dog 200 times bigger than he was and he bounded up, Ginsburg is 12 pounds, bounded up to this 200 pound dog and said, you know, welcome. And the, the owner was so surprised that Ginsburg was so friendly and not fearful at all. But everyone loves to meet Ginsburg. They come up and they speak to Ginsburg first Sometimes they talk to me, but not always. And shamelessly, that is how I've gotten seven houses to list. They meet Ginsburg, they meet me, they like me, and then I help them sell their house. Shamelessly, he has been my best calling card. Let's face it, he's cuter than I am, and he's very good at first impressions. And if folks don't like dogs, you know, 
maybe they're not worth that much anyway. I'm sorry if you're a cat lover. I, I, cat lovers are, are okay too. But dogs do inspire us. They teach us. They help us to be our best selves. Listen to the dog in your life. God comes to us in simple, ordinary ways, such as dogs. Pay attention. They are full of heart and they are full of soul. Our scripture tells us that greater love has no one than he lay down his life for his friend. Once my wife, Connie, we were kayaking and she got precariously placed between the dock and the kayak and I couldn't help her. And Ginsburg was there and Ginsburg ran off and found this burly man like that and brought him back. And this man <laughs> pulled Connie out of the water like she was a rag doll. How did he know how to do that? Um, you know, comp love is complex and it's very multifaceted. I learned that because when I was a hospice chaplain, I saw how dogs stayed by the side of the bed of a dying person. They never left. They stayed there. One time, a dog stayed for 24 hours, never ate anything, never drank anything, never went outside, just was there. Dogs are deeply committed and love us unconditionally. You know, I'm in constant dialogue with my dog during the day. He often goes to work with me, and he is the vice president of barketing, and it says so on my cards, vice president of marketing. He um, often does my writing for my marketing materials. However, he doesn't know how to use the computer and will not help me type my sermons. How, however, sadly, um, I've asked him to get his driver's license, but he says no. I do think perhaps insurance would be a problem there. When I tell him he has to stay in the car, he does it gladly. But if I don't tell him, that I'm gonna leave, he whines, he gets it. He waits patiently and then I come back. Jesus tells us in 1 John to let love be the rule. The one who loves knows God, for love is of God. The one who does not love does not know God. So dogs are God's creatures. They are God's ambassadors. Um, they have much to teach us about love if we're paying attention. Love is a complex and many faceted emotion, but we don't need to make it as complicated as we do. We can relax in the love of our family and friends, like a dog does when he lays at our feet or on our lap. Dogs wake up every day with true excitement. Dogs are filled with joy. Hey, it's a new day. Perhaps I'll get to take a walk with you today, or maybe we'll go see a friend and they might have a dog, or maybe I'll just get to be near you when you work and then later we can snuggle. I can't wait. To a dog, every day is a gift. May we have the wisdom to see dogs as our teachers about love and life. Amen. This next hymn we're going to sing is one of my very favorites. I've been singing it all week as I've worked on this sermon. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And here I was going to start playing some James Taylor. <laughs> Our next hymn is I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. Please join me in singing. I sing the song of the saints of God, faithful their whole lives through. a doctor and one was a queen and another a shepherd in pastures green they were saints of god if you know what i mean god help me to be 
church in a train in a shop or at tea there are saints are folk just like you and like me and i mean to be one too Friends, we are about to take the holy meal of communion, and I want to um, assure everyone that you are welcome at the table. Wherever you are on God's journey, however you express your love, you are welcome here. I, I want to share that the, the patten, the plate that I'm using, um, I had made for Spirit of the Sound, and it says Spirit of the Sound, and the chalice is also one I had made, and it says, God is wildly in love with you. Um, some of you I know attended Spirit of the Sound that I um, did from 1995 to 2005, but when LGBTQA folks heard that God was wildly in love with them, this was news to them, and many stood while serving communion and just sobbed. So thank you for being a part of that ministry that helped so many people. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took bread, and after he had given thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Whenever you eat this bread or you drink from this cup, you proclaim the death and the resurrection of Christ until Christ comes again. If you have something in your home to use for communion, anything, I invite you to take it now and remember, please, that God is wildly in love with you. As we celebrate communion, please join me in singing together, Come to the Table of Grace. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is Christ's table, not just yours or mine. Come 
to the table of grace. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of peace. This is Christ's table, not just yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Let us pray. Loving God, it is easy to be critical, critical of others and mostly God critical of ourselves. Help us to take down deep what it means to be loved and forgiven by you and to live each day as a celebration of that. God, may we know that this communion is a symbol of that, that we are loved just as we are, warts and all, by you, God. And if you love us, God, then we ought to love one another and ourselves deeply. In Christ's name, amen. We move now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns, and I will pause our recording as Zoom gives us play-by-play. -play. Uh, <laughs> I would like to uh, remind everybody that I am leading a moonlight hike around uh, the Natchez Peak Loop on Mount Rainier in three weeks, uh, three weeks from today. If you are interested in going, please uh, let me know just so we can all coordinate carpooling and I can just know who to expect up there for a picnic dinner. And again, moonlight hike. So you need to be comfortable hiking about 500 feet elevation gain and three and a half miles on dirt paths with some roots and rocks uh, at night. Uh, but it should be beautiful. Fingers crossed for good weather. Are there any other announcements this morning? Lynn, go ahead. So I just want to share that um, this Friday, um, we're having our next uh, Bible and Brews and when uh, Amy and Shannon will be back. So remember our book is uh, Parables, Short Stories by Jesus. And we will be um, starting on uh, chapter two, which is uh, The Good Samaritan. So it's Friday at seven o'clock on Zoom. There'll be an invite sent out by uh, Amy, um, Kirsten. Thank you. Alice, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, you all received the tow line uh, this week, and in it, is, there is a long list of um, needs, uh, donations for Hospitality House. So this is our month, August is our month for bringing items uh, for Hospitality House. You can bring them to church and I will be um, probably planning a drive around either the 15th or the 22nd. So we will let you know what date we select pretty soon. But if you're coming to church, I'll have the three heart baskets out where you can put your items in. Thank you. I also want to mention that next Sunday is the 60th anniversary picnic after worship. Uh, it will not be a potluck. Uh, food will be provided. So if you're interested in coming, please RSVP to Kirsten at uh, the church office. You are obviously welcome to come to worship in person next week if you'd like. Uh, sanctuary capacity is limited to 30, and we always have I've had more room uh, available. So if anybody is interested in coming, they may. Please, however, register online if you go to our homepage, npucc.org. 
and register so we have a head count before you come, that would be very helpful. And if we have overflow, we also have the fellowship halls and are planning that if more than 30 show up, then we can have people uh, not necessarily be in the sanctuary, but certainly watch the live stream from about 100 feet away, which might be an odd experience, but it means that you can be in person and we would love to see you. So again, please RSVP to Kirsten for the picnic and on the website for worship. Are there any other announcements this morning? Susan, go ahead. Um, this may seem like a funny announcement, but if anyone is shopping for the food bank next month, later this month, starting on the 4th, the Costco diapers are $9 off, and that's a substantial savings. So, and I noticed on the food bank list, they list sizes four, five, and six, which is of the larger sizes as a need. So if you're gonna be uh, at Costco and wanna make a donation to the food bank, they only run their Costco brand, which are really excellent diapers um, on sale a couple times a year. So I just wanted to make a plug for that. Thank you, Susan. Any other announcements this morning? As always, you are welcome to give online or by mailing checks to the church office, but let us respond to God's generosity in all of our lives by singing together our offertory response. Please join me in singing. I want to thank you again for not just this morning, but for being such a faithful congregation. I, I miss not seeing you, but just being in this space with you reminds me for many years that we have been on the path of how to love God best together. And I thank you so much. It, it just being here reminds me of, of how much love there is in this congregation and how much you have given to many people, including me. So now receive the benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God make her face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May, may God lift up the, her countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. We close by singing together, Go Now in Peace. Uh, please join me in singing through twice. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go in peace. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. I'll keep Zoom open for anybody who would like to chit-chat for a while. Uh, happy Sunday, everybody.